Hey guys, it's Colin here. It's a perfect summer day. It's 88 degrees outside, but it's partly cloudy, so it doesn't feel too hot. The air is nice, the sun is shining, and I can't wait to tell you that I'm going to be spending today sitting right here getting some amazing programming done. But before I do that, I'd like to show you what I've been working on over the last hour and a half. Um, I started working on a project uh, that is actually the goal of another new programmer that I've been talking to. He wants to create his own ATM. And so I decided to take that idea and uh, with some spare time, go ahead and, and see what it would look like putting an ATM interface together. So that's what I've done. And now I'm going to show you how it came out. And my hope is I can demystify some concepts regarding the wedding of, of front end and back end programming um, and just show you how quickly something like this can be done once you've had enough time and practice. So let's get into it. I'll go ahead and just start by showing you the finished product. When it runs, we get this very nice city skyline, colorful background. I don't know what it is about banks, but they seem to really, really love those city skyline backgrounds with the insert card to begin message. Now, obviously, this is where an ATM user would insert their card. Now, we haven't connected this to a physical ATM, so we don't have that hardware uh, and it's signal to go to the next screen available to us. So what I did is I just put a big button on the screen that's invisible so that you can just mouse click on to the next screen where you actually get the interface pop up. And I kind of went off of a template I saw online of a very basic ATM and just kind of made it what I felt to be a little bit nicer, just name, account, uh, and some account information like the balances on the left, um, and then a control panel over on the right. And obviously, you know, you've been to an ATM. You've seen uh, uh, control panels kind of like this. Now, they are all functional, and they all work uh, in different ways uh, according to whatever the purpose is of that button. Uh, select an account to withdraw from. Uh, you can go ahead, enter a withdrawal amount, and, you know, say $300. Um and then actually have the transaction complete. You can make deposits. It's essentially the same method, except that you uh, you know you're not going to be um, you know specifying an amount. You're just inserting cash. Also, on every screen, there's this return button, and this return button is actually activating one big method. It's a catch-all method that sends everything on this control panel. Uh, away. It sets it to uh, invisible, which is a great way of just refreshing the screen and returning to the control panel every time. So believe it or not, the code for this is quite concise. You go to account details, you get some account details. They're all just labels with strings in them. Fine. Uh, and then finally, a transfer, um, a transfer panel where you can select accounts and the amount to transfer from one to the other. Functional, excellent, okay. So that is actually the full extent of the ATM. Because the ATMs, when you actually think about it, there's not a whole lot that has to go on to make one of these interfaces workable. There's another component of the project and that's the hardware side of things. You know, and do I know how to build an ATM? I have no idea how to build an ATM. Um, and I don't know the connection um, between things like card readers and the program, um, you know, that's what's, that's somebody else's job. But as far as on our end, what we can do, something like this really can be accomplished and functional and ready to take uh, signals from hardware in a very short amount of time. And you can make it look nice pretty quickly. So that's the finished product. Um, with that, I'll actually go ahead now and kind of take you through the overview of the code briefly uh, to see what was behind this. Okay, so the code is written in Python, obviously, um, using PyCharm as the IDE and PyQt5 for building the GUI. We start out with our new ATM class, which inherits the main window object in the PyQt5 package to get us started in the key method, other than configuring the size and the title uh, of the GUI is the self.initUI method, which is defined next, uh, right here. And all that is, is it shows the uh, first screen uh, that the user sees when the program runs, which is perfect. So you'll recall it was very basic. It had two things. It had a, an invisible button that you press to advance to the next screen. 
that's all that is. Big button, transparent, uh, as well as that welcome message styled. And that's all for the uh, first screen. Now you go ahead and click that button and you go to the next screen method, which populates the main window with a lot of new content. I'll just give you a sense of the the scope of the content that had to be added element by element. It's actually quite, um, it visually it's large, even though the screen looked simple, but every little thing you see has to be styled and um, sized and added one by one. And that's just, that's just the way it is, and that's fine. It's just a combination of push buttons, combo boxes for drop down options, input fields for entering amounts, um, and just placed where they need to go and connected to where they need to be connected to cause it to function. That's really, that's really all I could say about that. Um, I will say the method uh, next screen it does start out with this empty list right here. Why would it have an empty list? Well, every method, uh, I'm sorry, every attribute rather, um, every widget, um, everything that shows up on that second screen is going to be added to that list as it's defined. And I did this for convenience later because what you need to do if you are going to be ending a transaction, just like when you're actually doing one at a real ATM, you know, you do your transfer, you do your deposit, yay, money, 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 it's all done, you click end session, it comes back to this screen. Well, how does that happen? Every element collected in that list is hidden with a for loop. Super easy, super concise. That's how you get back to the main screen. That's all. So rather than going you know, item by item to close it out, it's just a catch all. And that's that. So now below that, we have a couple other methods and this is just for screen navigation. Uh, the hide main menu method all that does is hide the buttons on the control panel when one of those buttons is clicked because when you click transfer you need all those other buttons to go away when you click deposit same thing same for any of the buttons all that stuff needs to be hidden so you can go on to the widgets that actually control whatever transaction you want to do so it hides all of them and that starts each uh, button press you see hit withdraw it hides the main menu hit deposit hide the main menu etc etc so uh, that's how you close out the control panel. This method is the catch-all mention, the catch-all method I mentioned. The it's called show main menu, and all it does is collect every secondary widget that can pop up onto the page after a button is pressed and hides them all, and shows the control panel again. So close the control panel, show the control panel, and now we can just apply those methods to um, you know each one of these. Uh, button click methods below and we don't have to program that for each method which is very nice makes it very concise and the uh, you know the def withdraw the def deposit the transfer all of these uh, button press methods are very basic um, all you really have to do is allow and disallow certain widgets to show up that's it make them visible make them functional so that's really uh, the extent of the code as I said before, this really didn't take long, and, and don't get me wrong, I mean, this is by no means like, you know, uh, like a complete ATM project. I mean, is will it take more programming for a real ATM? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I don't know what software is in um, ATMs, if, you know, it's fairly basic and it's all set up ready for a programmer to kind of just connect into, like with an API. Um, whatever but yeah there would be more programming needed in order to connect to the hardware and you know and to make space for signals from you know the card readers and from uh, physical button presses on the you know on the number pad enter buttons and close buttons and all that stuff so yeah there's more to be done but I mean this gives you the sense of really how much you can get done how quickly and if you if you need to do the rest of the programming, fine. I, I frankly don't think conceptually it's terribly difficult, which should be um, enthusing uh, for some of you newer programmers, um, kind of wondering about oh, how in the world do I make you know an impressive interface.
All right, guys, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, but do keep an eye out over the next week or two for uh, some more videos coming out because I've got some fun stuff in the pipeline that I cannot wait to show you guys. And other than that, if you're looking for crystal clear explanations on programming concepts and you want some more tutorials, please hit that like button for the video and subscribe to my channel and tell me what you'd like covered. See you next time.